Hi, welcome back to On The Volley, where we talk about all things football. And as you know, I talk about Celtic. Now, we're back here in the centre of Rome, okay, outside the Finnegan's Irish pub, the Celtic pub in Rome. And I'm very lucky today, okay, I'm here with Brian, Brian, who is from Scotland. Where about? Glasgow. He's from Glasgow, okay, a Celtic supporter and a season ticket, is that correct? Yeah, since I was about five, so 16 years. Five so, years old. Five years old, season ticket holder, yeah, so about 16 years and yeah, I still had it all these time. So. so that makes you what, 21? 21, yeah. 21 year old. God, he makes me feel older than I felt before, <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway. We've just seen, we've just watched the game, Celtic versus Dundee FC. Uh, give us your post-match analysis. I mean, going forwards, okay at times, huffed and puffed, but the goals were good. But at the same time, I think the wind played a part. Obviously, the Storm, Storm Eunice or whatever it is is over there, and I think that played a part. But at the same time, defensively is the problem. That's It's, it's cross balls. Every single time there's a ball crossed into a box, you're sitting watching through, through your eyes between your fingers and you cannot watch it because it's just, they seem to have a chance. Every team that plays is, if it's in Europe or it's at home. But no, we seem to get, get through it today and I mean, it's a big result. Jack and Mac has played well, but... Listen, just a quick question. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, I missed the first goal, yeah? Because I was in the toilet, unfortunately, okay? Um, I had, I'd had a few to drink before the game started. So, talk me through the first goal. I haven't seen it. I'll see the highlights later. So, starts on the right with Riley. He's played it to Jota. He's crossed it in. I think it's from a corner. And then Staffelt's headed it. I thought it came off the boy's hand and the referee wasn't giving anything. It's bounced and uh, kind of Jack and Marcus on the, the half turn has, has volleyed it in. And it, was, it was a good finish. Actually, really typical of the kind of goals he scores in, in Holland. Just kind of in about the box and poachers goals so yeah and it's, it's a good good reaction to the first goal because the first goal was poor from the corner just Hatati and O'Reilly get caught up at the back post none of them go and attack the ball and it's just the Dundee player just swings a leg of it Mullen and scores so it's, it's terrible but so another goal from a set, set yeah, piece it's, it's constantly set pieces uh, it just seems like a Kelly Seal it's, it's, it's been that since Diala Rogers like every manager so it's, it seems no different any times I set a piece at Parkhead and it's for in Europe or a team in Scotland it's you're watching it with your eyes shut so no but I thought we'd done well today to react but set pieces is a huge problem especially with the second goal they scored as well it's just got to be aggressive when you're heading on the ball just go and attack the ball the first goal the two of them are standing off and they don't want to go anywhere near the ball well the second goal that they scored okay right I mean he was in between Starfelt and Vickers so I would have thought that with those two there, it, we would have handled it better, but we didn't. Yeah, at the same time, Niall McGinn crossed the ball in. You have to say sometimes it's, it's just a good cross and it's just a good header. Yeah. So it's it, it's a bit of that as well. But definitely with the first one, I thought it was just terrible defending. But the second one, was it's a good cross from McGinn and it's a good header as well. But it's just it seems to be always set pieces that's our downfall, which is what we need to, we need to watch with. It's just... The rest of our game, I don't see any team looking to break us down from set to open play, but set plays, it's, it's worrying. I, I, I'll agree with that, yeah. Okay, and um, so, I mean, look, second goal. Yeah, it's... Maeda's got the ball on the left uh, and basically drives at the defender and then crosses it in. The def keeper parries it out and it just falls into the, the, the path of Jack and Marcus and just passes it in couldn't really be any easier for Jack and Marcus is the kind of goal he probably thrives on but I thought it's probably the, the best thing Maeda had done all game he's he's not a left winger he's, he's a striker I don't care what anybody says he's, he should be playing in the middle but Jack and Marcus is scoring hat tricks so he won't be playing in the middle so and if Kyogo comes back he certainly won't be playing in the middle so he needs to kind of get used to it but he didn't have his best game there to, today Maeda but it was a good cross okay. and the third goal what a goal yeah uh, Probably typical of the goals I've seen him score with Venlo and, and Holland is getting his head on the ball, cross balls. Something we don't we don't see a lot with Celtic with the way Ange plays, but when we start to get desperate, you see a lot of cross balls in the box and just some of the quality was poor. But this time, 
it's on the money from Ralston. It's typical of him getting down the right hand side. Some of his crossing can be terrible, but this time it's on the money. And Jackie Marcus is he's thrown himself in with the huts, and it's a good header, great header. Yep, a diving header, excellent header. Look, I mean, even when when they came back to two two, okay, right? I was saying, I don't know if you heard me in the pub. Yeah, I said, you know, we got this, we got this, and I said it's going to be a GG hat trick. You did say that actually, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. definitely did say that. Okay. When he when he came in, I, I always thought he will score goals. I, I couldn't believe we got him for so cheap, considering the second top goal scorer in Holland went to Dortmund, Donny Marlin, and he went for twenty five million, and we got the top goal scorer for free. Yeah. Which is is crazy to me, but I know they got relegated, so obviously we had a bargaining a kind of bargaining tool. But he just looked a bit looked a bit heavy. Didn't look as, as fit. But when he came back from injury. Kyogo's been out, he's looked a lot limp, slimmer, he's played a lot better. Tyne Castle, he was excellent, took his goal well, so I think that's the kind of, we're starting to see the best of him. He's a different option, he holds the ball up well, he can close games out well when we need to draw a foul. He's, he's a bit smarter than some of the, I'd say the Scottish players, I think the Europeans are they're better at winning fouls and playing the ref sometimes well. We're a bit naive and we just yeah, true. yeah we, ju- we just play on and I'm just like, oh, just go down or take a foul, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not criminal. But no, he was excellent today. Well, he's he has okay, right? He's he he's um, a little bit of a terror up front, okay, and he gives the defenders problems and creates space for the other players, okay, especially Maida. Look, I thought Maida today did a lot of running. I thought there was a lot of opportunities, and I remember one opportunity where I think Jota crossed the ball in, but it just bounced. Made have tried to go in and head it in, but it just bounced over his yeah. head. It was in the second half, yeah. It's, it's kind of came across and it's, it's bounced over his head. It, it was it was unlucky. It's just the bounce of the ball and, as I said, the wind. The first half as well, I think McGregor played the ball over and he's got a score. He's got a free header in the middle of the box and he's put it right in the keeper's hands. But at the same time, he, he is still scoring goals, my either. He's, he's not. It's not not scoring at all. He's he's getting goals round about. It's not every game, but it's. I think it's just hard when you're being measured to probably Kyogo up top. It's you're, that's what you're going to be put up against if, if the little man's scoring every week. Then when he's out of the team, you're looking for the next person to come in and do it again. So it's hard for them to live up to that. I thought Tati didn't have his best game. I thought he played okay, but at the same time, the way Ange wants to play football, you need to give players rest. You need to rotate them. That's what's having a good squads about. And Roger came on and done well. And, I really done. I thought he'd done okay, and that's probably why Denmark are looking to call him up to the national team in the next couple Absolutely, of weeks. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So it's a good win, but it's, it's huffing and puffing against teams at the lower level. But it's the games you need to win. You, you need to do that. It's going to happen at times, and it doesn't help when they drop points at United again. So. Yep, yep, yep. Them lot down the road. They drop. I call them them lot down the road. Yeah, you know. They dropped two points, so now we're three points ahead of them. So, yeah. you know, practically, you know, we're a, we have a game. Yeah. But okay. We can afford to lose a game. We don't want to lose a game. With the goal difference, it's, it's it's basically another game. It doesn't go to head to head straight away. It goes to goal difference. So I think we're maybe close to maybe eight goals clear. So if we keep that, then we'll be okay. And it's it's like another game. It's like another point if you keep the goal difference at that. So. That's kind of what we're hoping for, just to keep building on that and just keep them at arm's length. It's just best that way. So all in all, you know, I, you know, I, to be totally honest, I had actually said to my boys, okay, right, that we would win this, okay, and it would be a slaughter. That wasn't the case, and you know, to be totally honest, I really don't care as long as we got the win. We got the win, well deserved. Um, I'm happy with that. Are you? Well, we beat them 6-0 at the start of the season, but I was saying to Emma as well, I said, between 12th and 3rd with Hearts, we've seen St Johnston beat Hearts yesterday, there's not a lot between the teams, there, there isn't a lot of quality, I think it's just sometimes your luck on the day, refereeing decisions today again were quite poor, I know Rangers fans were moaning about their decisions, I don't think there's any, well, I say I don't think there's any bias, I think there is a wee bit of bias towards one club in the city, but... I think they're actually just poor in general. It's just that they're not full time, they're not trained well enough. But those teams, 12th and 3rd, Hearts to Dundee at the bottom, Austin Johnson, there's not a lot between them. They're, they're still decent players. Charlie Adam, I don't think he played today, but you've got Niall McGinn and Zach Rudden that came on today as well. 
there's decent players from top to bottom, so you can drop points at any one of these teams if they turn up on their day. And I think Dundee played well, but every game's a cup final for these teams when they play Celtic or Rangers, so you have to expect them to be on their best. That's probably why they sometimes gain nick a point like United today and United beat Rangers there in the season. It's they up their game. The reason they would be up closer to the league if, if they upped their game in other games against maybe United against Motherwell, that's my maybe why they'd be up there. But as I said, it's just three points and that's all that matters, really. Completely agree with you, completely agree with you. Alright, so you know that's basically our coverage of the game from Brian, okay, right? So I'm gonna ask you two more questions, Brian, and then we can close up. Um, can we do the treble? Yes, I think we can do the treble. But I would bite your hand off the now just for the league. And I couldn't care less about the cup, if I'm honest. Completely agree. So take take the league just now, but I think watching the watching the Bodo game during the week, I think Europe's done personally. I don't think we'll come back in the Bodo game. I think they were well organised. It doesn't suit us, it's a plastic pitch. I think we'll we'll struggle. If any, if anything they had a terrific result against Dortmund, if they go through well, that's their fault. They're never going to win it, but it might tire them for the next week, as we've seen today when they tired and they, they drop points, which might just benefit us. So I didn't want to go out against Bodo, but it seems that way. So I will take the treble if it comes, but if the league is the only thing that comes, then I'll take that and the, the financial benefits of that. Yeah, well, the league equals Champions Leagues and the financial benefits. So I completely agree with you on that one, OK? And to be totally honest, I think a lot of people underestimate Bodo. I've said this in my previous uh, um, podcast, and I also said I call Bodo Glimt the Celtic of Norway because they play the same game. They play Ange ball, only it's nuts and ball. Yeah, no, they were. There. I watched the game from watched the game from Celtic Park, and they were excellent. And I think it was just. They'd obviously watched a lot of Celtic, they knew how to counteract us, they, they sat in with a five and when they went forward it became a three with the two were going forwards and it was just about, sometimes it's just about beating a man, if you can beat a man individually then you open the game up and, and they done that at the wide areas and Celtic ran out, of idea, ran out of ideas in the wide areas so that's why they, they lost but I'd be very surprised if we turn that over in Norway, I hope we do because although it's a new competition, I want to see Celtic do well in any competition so it's... It'd be good to go through, but if we don't, it's not the end of the world. We just need to focus on the league, and if the cup comes, it's a bonus. We've got Dundee out of the way. We played well last time against them, one for the now. So hopefully, go there, get a result, and see what happens. Completely agree with you. Completely agree. I mean, if we, I, I'd like us to win as well against Bodo, but if we don't, it's not the end of the world. The league is a priority. Um, so. Let's just see what happens uh, next Thursday. Either way, okay, we're not too worried. I'm not worried, you're not worried. Um, okay, well, listen, Brian, I'd like to thank you very much for giving me your, your time, okay, for this interview. Uh, if you want to give a shout-out to anyone. Yeah, probably to my my mum, dad and sister, who are actually travelling back from uh, Malaga just now. They've got a whole hole over there, so travelling back to Malaga, so they'll probably see this when they land. And also to my mate Jordan Bell. I know you were at Tannadice today, so I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, well, good luck with the rest of the season. <laughs> OK, and there you have it. Listen, thank you very much for watching us. Press like if you like. Put your comments down underneath. As you know, I respond to every single comment. Um, if you haven't subscribed as yet, please subscribe. Please, please. I always mess that up. Please subscribe, OK? Um, from Brian and Misha, we're out. <laughs>